Coming to you from the Grassy Valley Stage Pulpit in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are an outreach ministry of Grassy Valley Baptist Church, and we're located on the corner of Lovell Road and Kingston Pike. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Kirk. And I'm Richard Britton, and we welcome you to another episode of The Word at GV. And today's word is Trinity. <laughs> And let me start off with the definition of what Trinity is. Now, in a Christian viewpoint, we, we know, you know, most of us know Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But I want to give you an Oxford Dictionary definition of mm -hmm. it. And they do take it from a Christianity view. Okay. They say the Trinity is the union of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as one God, hmm. right? So we're not polytheistic in hmm. thinking that each one's separate. There's not three gods. We see one God, three separate persons within that. Okay. And that's going to be important to remember. If we use it in a formal sense, it's a group of three people or things. That's where we get in the polytheism thinking. Hmm. But... Um, you gave me three passages to look at, mm -hmm. and I think they're just awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and let's just kind of go through those, and then I want to go into the practicality of it or what it, try to convey what it looks like. So we're going to try and give a concept of the Trinity. All right. Okay. So the first one is in, uh, do you want me to just go ahead and read it? And yes, then, okay. Yes. All right. So the first one is Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. And this is the, obviously the Great Commission where we see the Trinity go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now this is Jesus yes, talking about himself yes, and his Father or God, right. the part of him right. and the Holy Spirit part of him. He was the Holy Spirit. He was God in yeah. flesh. Yeah. And I know that's hard. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I really, there's times when I have, my, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around this. But let's go <laughs> on to the next scripture. All right. Which is 2 Corinthians 13, 14, mm -hmm. where Paul is saying to, in his epistle, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. be with you all. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. I know. It's mm -hmm. I I don't know what to say about that. I you know, it's like we he, you know, Paul saying the love of God, so we know how much God loves us, right? Yes. So he says the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Right? Yes. Flesh. We know who he is, mm -hmm. physical, and the love of God, mm -hmm. the unseen God that we, you know, all we saw yes. was the the flesh of Jesus Christ, but yeah. the big overall God mm -hmm. and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, that's just a really good example of the triune God. Yes. And then we talk about John fifteen twenty six. here again. This is Jesus talking. But when the helper comes, and he's referring to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. whom I s will send to you from the Father, that is the <laughs> Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. And he's talking about himself. So there's, there's an exa another example of the triune God. So there are three separate persons, but one God. Right. One God in three persons. And well, you know, some people we, we look at, here again, I always go back to the Old Testament because that's where it all began, was yes. in Genesis. Yeah. And... You know, we have the New Testament, and the triune God is very evident in the New Testament mm -hmm. because it's either Paul or Jesus alluding to, you know, and saying, God the Father, God the Son, mm -hmm. God the Holy Spirit. I yes. mean, it's evident throughout the New Testament, but it's a little bit more difficult to see in the Old Testament. But I want to, there's a lot of debate. I'll start off with Genesis 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one. all right. Start at the very beginning the of the Bible. Beginning. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to 
um, explain, I think, and I know you know this, but go ahead, read Genesis 1-1. Right. In the beginning, right. God created the heavens and the earth. Keep going. That was God. God. Okay. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God. There's Spirit. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've got two of the triune. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Okay, now, some people say that that was Jesus. Yes. That he he's the light of the world. Yes. And later on in Scripture, it mm -hmm. also talks about Adam and Eve walking with God in the cool of the day, mm -hmm. physically walking. Yes. That could also mean Jesus. Now, I yes. know that there's a lot of debate out there about, you know, but most scholars, most Bible scholars that have studied the Bible yeah. and gone back through and actually read it in the Hebrew and the Greek and Aramaic, whatever, mm -hmm. it always alludes to that is the Trinity right there. The Trinity mm -hmm. was right there in the Garden of Eden. In the very beginning, yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's yeah. not just the New Testament, it's the Old Testament. There, there's one of those Psalms that refers to the sons of God uh, yeah. uh, overjoyed at the creation. Right. And they, they saw uh, the creation and they were rejoicing uh, overjoyed at the, at the concept. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, we, if we put that in the context, those three scriptures that we we're talking about in the New Testament, mm -hmm. we go back to the Old Testament in Genesis. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm building a platform here. All right. All right. So we've talked about we know the triune God was there at creation. Yes. Okay. And walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. Now, let's back up before he created Adam and Eve. Genesis 1, 26. Yes. What does it say? Then God said, let us make man in our image. All right, stop. Okay. So image is flesh. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, hold on to that thought. Flesh. Now keep reading. According to our likeness. Okay, keep going. <laughs> let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Right. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him Male and female, he created them. Okay. <laughs> now, where's, where's the part that says that he breathed into the nostrils? Oh, I see. When he, when he breathed into those nostrils and man became, that's in chapter 2. Okay. In verse 7. Okay. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Okay. Keep going and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life. All right, and we've done Bible studies on that before. That mm -hmm. breath of life yes. is man's spirit. Yes, that's so uh, from the time of Adam to right now everybody that every baby that's born has a spirit, a mm -hmm. soul. Mm-hmm. Our own individual, it's what makes Richard Richard and me yes. me and makes us individuals. And yes. there's no two of us alike, even twins. They're, they're not alike. Right. We're quadruplets. They're all, they all have their own soul. Yes. All right. Now, Adam and Eve, after the sin was committed, Mm-hmm. God, um, of course, we know Adam was supposed to live and toil in, through his work. Mm -hmm. And then Eve uh, was to bear children through child labor. Up to that point, okay. we're making the assumption, you know, she didn't have children. They didn't have children no. is the assumption I'm making. But here's what I'm saying. That's when, remember, there's a verse in there about uh, the seed 
when, when yes. after the curse, after uh, cha- I think it was in chapter three somewhere, mm-hmm. um, when we were cursed mm-hmm. through Adam and Eve, yes. God said to Eve that verse, and I can't mm-hmm. remember what it is right off the top of my head. I'm gonna let you turn to it in chapter three. Well, to to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Okay. Uh, just before that, and I will put enmity between you and yes. the woman. That's yes. That's one, yeah. And right. And between your seed and her seed with a capital S. Yes. Now okay. stop right there. Okay. All right. So God, in my opinion, is talking about the physical seed of the father impregnating the woman, Adam impregnating Eve Mm -hmm. through his seed, okay? And God was gonna put enmity between the devil and the seed of man. Now, follow with me. We've talked about flesh, we've talked about spirit, and we've talked about seed. Yeah. All right, now, let's take it one step further. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about the triune God. We know that we've already established that there's a triune God. Mm-hmm. One person, one person that's mm-hmm. flesh, spirit, mm-hmm. and overall. I mean, he's mm-hmm. the father, the, the right. big guy, the big honcho. God the father. All right, now, if he made us in his own image, mm-hmm. okay, that's the flesh, Jesus. Jesus came in the flesh. Okay. If he gave us a spirit in chapter 2, verse 7, mm-hmm. he breathed a soul into us. Yes. Okay. Holy Spirit. God has yeah. the Holy Spirit, right? God, God the Je- Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah God, God is Jesus. God is the Holy Spirit. Well, we have a soul or a spirit. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> then the third thing is... We have a physical father because we're born of our father's seed. Yes. If we're reborn of the spirit, Mm -hmm. that's the spiritual seed of God. Yes. That's a reference to when Jesus himself is going to come. And after he completes his mission of of he, he dies on the cross, he's buried, then he rises. Right. Then he becomes a life-giving spirit. Right. First Corinthians uh, 15, verse 45, he's a life-giving spirit. And uh, shortly before he went, uh, uh, you know, he was commissioning his disciples, he breathed on them. Yes. He was restoring yes. something to that them. That was in Luke. John, it's the last. Uh, John, that's right. Yeah. John uh, 16 or 17, somewhere around in there. Well, it's, yeah, he's describing it in 16, but yeah. somewhere in about 20 or 21, he breathes on the disciples. Yes, yes. Receive ye the, the he just breathes right. on them. So I, I say this, <laughs> I really try to say it reverently, and I mm. am not trying to equate us to God. That That mm. is not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Even though the serpent said mm-hmm. to Adam and Eve, or to Eve, mm-hmm. if, you know. You'll be like God. You'll be like God if you eat mm-hmm. from the knowledge of good and evil, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. And then even God himself said we must put them out of the garden because they'll become like us if they yes. eat from the tree of life. What's the tree of life, Richard? The tree of life is a symbolic representation of Jesus himself, life. We're saved. Jesus. We have eternal life through yeah. Jesus Christ. See, it's mm-hmm. all right there together. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And it's not like I'm trying to expound any kind of secret that God doesn't mm-hmm. want to reveal to people. But the uniqueness is what I'm trying, the concept. The con- I'm trying to get people to see mm-hmm. we are not just in the image of God. God has given us He is so smart. (laughs) He is just so smart. You know, I I always wondered what that (laughs) hole was in my heart, that I was always alone. Oh, a longing for something, huh? And you don't know what it is? (laughs) Yeah. 
It's Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit yes. who comes. God comes and dwells within you yes. and fills that hole. See, <laughs> we're born missing something. Yes, we are. We are missing God. See, because we're not in communion with God. In. Adam forfeited that yes. through his disobedience. Yes. So the whole purpose of this exercise is to get people to understand or to see that they're lacking something in their life. And God put it there on purpose so that we would search for it. Yes, he has. Um, he's, he's teaching us about fulfilling that void that we have. Yes. It's in John 14, 23. Jesus is, is speaking here, and Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and, and make our, our home yeah. with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, to literally be indwelt or have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit living inside us yeah. is beyond my comprehension. Yeah, I, yeah you and, and here, you know, Richard, I, yeah. I was going to say before we got into this, you know, okay. I, I really, I hesitated. <laughs> <laughs> in my thought process about talking about this or even bringing this triune God word up. Yes. Um, because, I mean, we have such finite minds. You know, we, we mm. can't understand the, the secrets of God and how mm. he works and operates. But when we look at Scripture, we can see ourselves in the makeup of what God is. And if we're <coughs> lacking something, it's because he put it there by design. Yes. We've, and that's what I want to get people to think about. Oh, see? if we're lacking something. Yeah. We, we were created in his image, and then came the fall. Yeah. And then we, we've, we've never known a day without being uh, exposed to or corrupted by sin. Right. So we've never had the capacity to... To even know what we're missing right and he tells us through scripture that it's him actually yeah that we're missing yeah and he wants it like that I mean he yeah. reveals himself in nature to us and he reveals himself in a lot of ways but it's also an inward feeling now unfortunately and I don't mean to get up on a tangent or a rabbit trail about this but you know I'm thinking a lot of people fulfill that whole that missing part with all sorts of things. And we've talked oh, about yeah. that before with drugs yes. or, you know, Pleasure. any of our senses. Mm -hmm. And that's what, you know, I think that's where uh, when God said, you know, I'll put enmity between your seed and, mm -hmm. uh, you know. He was speaking seed. to the serpent and yeah. uh, enmity between the serpent's seed and the seed of Eve. That's interesting. Eve is female. Yeah. And they typically don't have seed. They have eggs. No, but yeah. Right, yeah. but there, it takes two mm -hmm. to produce a child, and that's why I say, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. we're born of a physical seed of our father. Yes, you know, we have a we have an earthly father that contributes the seed to our life, mm -hmm. but we have reborn life oh. when we receive the seed from our spiritual father. Yes, and that's that missing piece. Yeah. So you know, we uh, just like God, we have a spirit. Just mm -hmm. like God, we have flesh, mm -hmm. and, you know, God has Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. but in the spiritual seed, God the Father, the mm -hmm. spiritual Father, He gives us His seed spiritually, just like we receive the seed from our physical yes. Father. Yes, But it's in a different form. It's a spiritual seed, yeah. unseen, something that, you know, we, and, you know, I, Man, <laughs> I cannot even wrap my mind around that. I, yeah. I just, I accept it. I know it to be true, but to try and explain it, I, oh, how, how just can, scripture. <laughs> how, how, can, how can anyone actually explain what a spirit is? Yeah. And then, then we are indwelt by the spirit of God. Yeah. It's a little hard to comprehend. And uh, he describes it, you know, wherever the wind blows, you know. I mean, you feel it. You know, they, they yeah. knew it at Pentecost. It came like a rushing wind yeah. or it fell down upon Jesus like a dove descending, like a dove descending like from that. heaven. Yeah. It, it, it just, it's so hard to describe. But mm -hmm. I see so, so many similarities between us and God. And I think that's why... Mm. 
he is so upset at times. And thank goodness he's long-suffering and patient with us. Yes. Um, but, you know, it's got to just hurt him so deeply to see that he's doing everything on his part to mm-hmm. make himself known to us, and we just totally do that. Well, yes, that is a, an, a, that, that's a horrible thing that mankind has rejected yeah. uh, his creator, and the creator has reached out in so many ways. He's revealed himself through the creation, and then he came in the flesh. Mm-hmm. We could more likely relate to a human being Right. You know, and so right. Jesus has come. And he could have come in, I mean, there's so many ways he could have come. Yeah. I mean, he, and, and I love the way he does this, his design. You know, he could have come with myriads of angels, you know, at his beck and yes. call. And even Jesus said that, you know, if I call upon, you know, my avenging angels, I mean, they'll come and, you know, I don't have to go through this process. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he willingly, willingly went to the cross for us to die, yes. you know, for our sins, for our sinning mm-hmm. against yeah. a, a holy and righteous <laughs> creator. Yeah. And I just, you know, wrapping my mind around that, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't, I'm going to steal something from Del Tackett. Okay. It wasn't that, you know, Christ hung on the cross mm. and it it, it it was it was man that nailed him there but it was his love that kept him there yes you know <laughs> yes and he didn't have to do that he was under no obligation and like I said he could have came to this earth and t- taken it all out and foregone all that but he didn't. He doesn't work like that. He came to Earth to serve man, mm-hmm. to show his love. He's always the best example. I always mm-hmm. go back to that when I'm confused about anything. I go back mm-hmm. to Jesus and his example, and um, he just uh, his his love. You know, he he comes and and dwells within us, and then through us he spreads. Mm -hmm. out to his creation and he knows that he's not you know everyone is not going to heaven everyone is not going to heaven that's we know that that's biblical yes yep so um Mm. uh, but he he works through us and uses us so instead of like in the old testament he used prophets to prophesy Mm -hmm. to people and that may or may not have worked from generation, but now we have the indwelling spirit mm. who's actually with us and works through us. The prophets, the spirit was temporary. Through us, it's a permanent. Yes. You know, and I, I he did. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot explain it. I don't understand it, but I do know that it's it's um, it's it's the reality of the way things are. So anyway, yeah. well. I, Each member of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, each one is a person. Yeah. He he came into the world that he created, and the world knew him not. Yep. That that sin genuinely blinded mankind. Yeah. If we're unable to know our Creator, and then the, uh, the Jewish people, he came to them, and they received him not. Yeah. So they had more. Ac- they had access to the scriptures and could have recognized him, you know, when he came. Right. But there were some who were able to, in spite of everything, they were able to receive him. Right. I don't really know why that happens, but some have received him, and to them he gave the right to become children of God. Yeah. And that's John yeah. 1, 10, 11, and twelve. But um, this is quite a a plan that God has had to to make Himself known to us right who who are created in his image uh, that's right. what gives us our value mm-hmm. is uh, you know Jesus asked a question once uh, what would it profit a man if he should gain the whole world mm-hmm. and lose his soul yeah you know I mean you can't take the whole world with you where you're going no what is a soul 
Yeah. And how valuable is it? Yeah. You know, exactly. If you lose and it. And in God's eyes, yeah. every soul counts. Yes. And I know I made the statement not uh-huh. everyone is, is going to go to heaven, but in God's eyes, every soul counts counts we yes. don't judge because oh, we don't know man's heart oh. or woman's heart and and we see a lot of you know things going on in this world right now that aren't right and we know and we 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 want them to know the saving grace of the lord but you know god's will is is that no one should perish that's correct it is not his will that any should perish yeah but that all be converted, all repent, all right. come to faith in Christ. That's his will. Yeah. And whether uh, it's a, an antinomy, basically, a, it looks like an apparent contradiction, but man is free to choose. It's free will. And yet God, uh, God selects, he chooses whom he will, mm-hmm. but it looks like man's free to choose him as well, well or, exactly. or choose to reject. So there's hard, exactly. sometimes logical, things, um, it, it, it appears to be a contradiction, but in the mind of God, it is not. We have finite minds. Yes. We don't think, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Right. And he is so far above us. But, you know, we, we know we can rest in the assurance of his sovereignty and the direction that he's, he's going in. We know his will is the best. So, yes. um, but yeah, talking about the triune God is, is <laughs> It's one of the most difficult things, and you know, I've I've taught on the Holy Spirit and, and our spirit, and yeah. you know, you make attempts at it, but it just I can't really. I know for myself, I can't really explain it well enough for other people to see it clearly. Mm-hmm. I know it to be true, and I understand it in my own mind, and God reveals it at times, but. Um, yeah, it's a very difficult concept to grasp. Yeah. If I were going to kind of summarize it, you know, um, the doctrine of the Trinity is the belief that God exists in three persons, mm-hmm. and there's only one God right. who exists in three persons. That'd be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the word Trinity is not actually found in the Bible. Right. But the concept is, yes. it's many times where you see all three members of the Godhead and, and uh, each of the three members is distinctly revealed as a person. Mm-hmm. The Father is a person. When, when Jesus began to pray, he said, Our Father who art in heaven. Yes. And uh, in John five nineteen, Jesus attributes the, the abilities that he has. He says, the Son can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the Father doing. Right. So the, there's a de- interdependency and interactivity. And Jesus as the human, the human being, and yet at the same time fully God, right. that is a mystery that's hard to comprehend. Yeah. But Jesus is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. And he's, he's described, the Holy Spirit's described as the helper or the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. This is Jesus speaking. Right. So all through the New Testament, you can see people uh, or God referring to a, another member of the Godhead. Right. And, uh, then it, and yet, it's clear in the Old Testament, there's only one God. Right. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Right. They're uniquely related to mm-hmm. each other, they're one, mm-hmm. and yet three. Right, see, and you're one. I'm I one. see you as one, Yes. but there's three separate entities to you, physical, yeah. spiritual, and God. Yeah, uh, in Thessalonians, it describes a spirit, a soul, and a body. Right. And I've, I've had difficulty deciding what attributes belong to the spirit, and what belongs to the soul and what belongs to the physical body. The, the physical body, yeah. it's easier to, to figure out. Right. But right. when you speak of the soul and try to contrast that with the spirit, or you speak of God the Father, who is spirit, and God the Holy Spirit, who is spirit, what's the distinction? But, but God's the same. God's one yeah. person. When he comes to dwell within us, yes. Jesus... The Holy Spirit and God is within you. A piece of him is within you, right? Well, it says the fullness of the Godhead 
is in Christ. Yes. And then Jesus says to Thomas, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Yes. And he leaves everybody scratching their heads like, how, how can this be? Yes. Well. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, believe him. And yeah. maybe the understanding Whenever will come later. Whenever you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, how you pray to God. Yeah. And, you know, you hear that small, still voice in the back. And you know that's yes. God that yeah. dwells within you. Yeah. There's his spirit right there. He's the helper. He's the educator, the teacher, the, yeah. you know, it doesn't have anything to do with Richard Britton. It has to do with God dwelling within you. Well, I'm aware of a new um, line of thoughts mm -hmm. that, that goes through my mind now. All right. That's why we change. Yes. We're no longer the old man. Although he's still there and he tries to suppress the Holy Spirit, right. your God that dwells within you. Yeah. But, you know, it's... Oh, well, we have the mind of Christ, yeah. which we didn't have before. Right. Where did that come from? And uh, yeah. how, there's just so many mysteries. We, we've, um, but we've, we've talked about the concept of the Trinity. Yeah. <laughs> and how there are three persons and right. in, in one God in three persons. Um, well, that's a pretty good study for today, I think. I think know, so, covered, too. I think you're right. A lot of material. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. Well, folks, we, uh, we appreciate you being with us today, and we hope that today's word uh, has made some sense. It, mm -hmm. is, it is with reverence and trembling mm -hmm. that I just... <laughs> yeah. uh, we have tried to express what we think the Trinity is and how he interacts with us. So uh, we appreciate you um, being with us today. Yeah, God, God bless you and thank you for joining us here. Uh, please uh, tune in each Thursday and, and uh, watch. Uh, if these programs are helpful and uh, useful to you, uh, tell your friends about them. And, yeah, hit right. that like button. <laughs> yeah, hit that like button on there. And yeah. we really thank you for joining us and keep us in prayer. God bless you.